Hello friends, this video on cell part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we are now going to talk about a very important component of the cell that is nucleus. So what is nucleus? Now if you look at a cell, you will always be able to notice a structure which is somewhat spherical and it is somewhat located towards the center of the cell and that structure is nothing but nucleus. So here if you see in this cell, which is the prominent central structure that you can see, this structure. So this is the nucleus and this nucleus is present in both animal cell as well as a plant cell. So this is an animal cell and this one is a plant cell. So here also you can see a prominent spherical structure here and this structure is nucleus. So nucleus is a spherical or oval structure near the center of a cell. Now it is not always present at the center. Now sometimes, especially in plant cells, what happens is there is a big vacuole present inside the cell. And this vacuole is an organelle which is specific to plant cells. So it has a major role to play in plant cells. Therefore, they are quite big in plant cells. And due to this large sized vacuole, it often pushes the nucleus towards the periphery. And that's why in plant cell, you often might see that the nucleus is almost towards the side or towards the periphery and not towards the center. But otherwise, it is located near the center of a cell. Now, if you talk about the shape of the nucleus, sometimes it is spherical, mostly it is spherical or oval, but sometimes it can be of different shapes also. For example, in some organisms like paramecium, paramecium, we spoke about paramecium, right? It is a uh, protozoa and it is a unicellular organism. And here in paramecium, if you look at the shape of a nucleus, it has bean shaped nucleus, somewhat like this. This type of shape is there in paramecium. Similarly, if you look at the blood cells, the RBCs, WBCs, when you look at the blood cells, the nucleus, the shape of the nucleus, they have lobed nucleus. So lobed nucleus would be something like this, where you have, uh, it is kind of two halves which are joined together. So that is called a lobed nucleus. Again, if you look at the cells of smooth muscles, so the smooth muscle fibers, if you look at them, so their cells have an elongated nucleus, something like this. So the shape of the nucleus is not necessarily spherical for all the cells. So for some cells, they can be of different shapes as well. So it is present in both plant and animal cells. So that is another important thing because nucleus is something which plays a very significant role, especially during cell division. So we will talk about the role of nucleus in the next few slides. So without nucleus, a cell cannot exist. Therefore, all plant as well as animal cells, they all have nucleus. So nucleus was first described by this scientist called Robert Brown. And Robert Brown was able to discover nucleus in the year 1831. So it was quite a long time after the cell was discovered. So cell was discovered around 1665. So you see that was in 1600s, this is in 1800. So a long gap between the discovery of cell and the discovery of nucleus. But once the nuclear was discovered, it was later observed that even inside the nucleus, there are so many important components which are present. So let us talk some more detail about nucleus. So talking about the significance of nucleus, why do we say that nucleus is one of the most important component of the cell? That's because it is the control center of the cell. What do we mean by control center? So it is called control center because it participates in some of the very important activities of the cell. That is, it helps in movement and it helps in reproduction. Now we have learned from the cell theory that cells always arise from pre-existing cells. Now how will cells arise from pre-existing cell? When the pre-existing cell divides. So cell division is nothing but a way of reproduction where new cells are being produced. And in this cell division, the major role is played by the nucleus. So nucleus plays the central role in the formation of new cells, that is in cell division or reproduction. And it also plays a very important role in movement. 
Now, just imagine these are two very important roles as far as a cell's life is concerned. So now, since nucleus controls all the vital activities, therefore it is called the control center of a cell. Now, now that we are talking about the nucleus and we are also going to talk about the various components present inside the nucleus. Now, it is important to specify the two types of cells which are classified based on the type of nucleus they have. So, these two types of cells are eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell. So, what do we mean by eukaryotic and prokaryotic? The word you means true. So true and karyotic, the word carrion means nucleus. So those cells which have a true nucleus, they are called eukaryotic cells. Whereas there are another group of cells which do not have a true nucleus. Let us see what are these. So eukaryotic cells, they have well-defined nuclear membrane. So when we talk about a nucleus, so there is a wall which separates the nucleus from all other components inside the cell. So that wall is called nuclear membrane. Like how you have a cell membrane outside cell, similarly you have a nuclear membrane outside the nucleus. So those cells which have a very well defined nuclear membrane, so they have a distinct nucleus, something like this. Let us suppose this is your cell. And inside the cell, you have a nucleus. Now, how do you know this is the, your distinct nucleus? Because you have a nuclear membrane, which separates the nucleus from other parts of the cell. So, this type of cell is called eukaryotic cell. But there are certain cells where the content inside the nucleus, it just remains scattered within the cell. So, there is no specific nuclear membrane. They are called prokaryotic cell. Now this is very important because certain group of organisms are prokaryotic because they do not have a true nucleus. So here we can say that since you have a particular well-defined nuclear membrane therefore you have a distinct nucleus or a true nucleus that is why the name eukaryotic. U means true, carrion means nucleus and here there is no distinct nucleus. So, in this case, in case of a prokaryotic cell, so all the material inside the nucleus that is just scattered anywhere inside the cell. In eukaryotic cell, cell organelles are present. Now, I have already told you, right, the various components which are present inside the cell, they are called cell organelles. So, these cell organelles, in case of a eukaryotic cell, this is eukaryotic, you have specific cell organelles which are present like this. So, they are all distincted from the other ones by a specific membrane. But in case of prokaryotic cells, many cell organelles are absent. Most of the cell organelles are not at all there. Eukaryotic cell region bounded by nuclear membrane contains DNA and protein. So this region that is nucleus, inside the nucleus what do we have? We have DNA. What is DNA? So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. We will learn about these later. In fact in your higher classes you learn a lot of detail about DNA. So DNA is that particular thing which which contains the information for inheritance. Like you would have observed that we all look very similar to our parents. Why? Because some of the traits get carried over from our parents generation to our generation. Similarly, our kids might have similarities with us. That, that's again because some of the traits are being carried over from our generation to the next generation. So this concept of passing of traits from one generation to the next generation is called heredity and this type of inheritance is because of DNA. So DNA is present inside the nucleus and that is why we say that nucleus plays a very important role during cell division. Whereas in case of prokaryotes, there, there is no specific region which contains DNA or protein. It is an undefined region with nucleic acid. So these type of uh, nucleic acids like DNA, they are just scattered anywhere inside the cell. Now examples of eukaryotic cells are most of the plant cells and animal cells, they are eukaryotic that is they have distinct cell organelles, they have a distinct nucleus with a proper nuclear membrane. Examples of prokaryotic cells are bacteria and blue-green algae. So bacteria, they are unicellular also, so they just have one cell and inside that one cell also, they do not have separate organelles. It is like everything is scattered inside. 
So now that we have discussed both these type of cells, let us quickly see how they look like. So this is how they will look like. So in eukaryotic, this is an animal cell and this is a plant cell. So these are examples of eukaryotic cells because here you see you have a specific nuclear membrane. So this membrane, this layer which you see outside the nucleus, that is the nuclear membrane and this entire structure is a nu is the nucleus. Not only nucleus, here you can see that other cell organelles, they are also very distinctly seen as separate. So the same is true for the plant cell also, you can separately see each of these organelles, nucleus is also bound by a nuclear membrane. But on the other hand, if you look at this prokaryotic cell, so this is a bacterial cell. So this is how uh, the cell of a bacteria looks like. So here you see inside the cell you really don't have a lot of cell organelles. You don't, really don't see much. So all you can see here is this some coiled structures present here and these is nothing but your DNA. So the DNA is lying just scattered. There is no membrane called nuclear membrane. There is no distinct nucleus. Nothing is there. So all the material is present just scattered somewhere inside the cell. So this is how a prokaryotic cell looks like. Now knowing eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell is very important. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.